the largest leap in capability that you get in these architectures though by an order of magnitude is when you add a space layer for missile defense because it buys you so much time and it's global meaning you've got eyes everywhere all the time radars have to wait until something comes over the horizon it's they're they're limited by the geometries and and of course geographies What you're seeing with the change in threats, for instance, many of the threats we've seen in historical times were ballistic. Now we're seeing, you know, hypersonics, non-ballistic threats uh, becoming the preponderance of our adversaries, you know, arsenal. So that you'll see the Space Force as well as MDA working closer together, looking at combined layered architectures that are no longer sort of staying true to these stovepipes. They've become now an, a completely interwoven set of capabilities. We're looking for technologically advanced sensors, command and control systems. It's a layered system that it takes now to defeat all types of threats and not just threats of today, but you know, programs that we're working on now, we're being asked to look at threats 30 years in advance of now, um, from short range missiles to hypersonic warheads uh, hurtling through space. So no simple feat. And, and then when it comes to that level of missile defense, no nation and no system can stand alone. And so we're able to harvest a lot of that technology from other programs that we support, even other parts of our business. You know, there's things on the aircraft side that we found ways of utilizing in the space with proper shielding. And we've, we've just learned a lot, right? So. Our ability to apply this sort of cutting edge technology and where it stands without the commensurate, you know, high risk profile, as well as high, high cost profile, I think that's a, that's a big leap. You know, the, the defense mission, it needs highly reliable vehicles. What happens in that missile in a zero gravity environment is a challenge. Any stray particle that's out there within the vehicle can cause problems in that type of a zero gravity environment. So we are doing all of the testing that we can do. We have special factories, a space factory that we use for that testing. And we need to make sure, and we will make sure that everything works in advance of that mission. So we understand the parameters and the capabilities. Now to take that in their physics-based models and understand, you know, what the, the limits are. And then we can go back and look at, look at from a price perspective, you can cost some of that out and build cost models around it and say, okay, you know, where do we get the most bang for our buck, if you will, in these different layers? And we're seeing that today. There's, there's elements of space architectures that you get a lot more bang for your buck you know, over other space architectures. And we're, we're able to show that to our customers and help them make better and more informed decisions. So that is certainly key to our, the work we've been doing here um, in Raytheon Technologies.